Many times on this program and this network, we've talked about how racism in transportation decimated black and brown communities. After the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956, planners routed some highways directly and sometimes purposefully through our neighborhoods. And in some cases, the government used eminent domain to take over homes outright. We're now starting to see some accountability with $1 billion of President Biden's infrastructure plan going towards, quote, reconnecting communities of color to economic opportunity. One historic neighborhood in Virginia wasn't destroyed by an interstate, but the demolition of a bridge connecting it to the surrounding area. We're talking about Uniontown, a historically black neighborhood in Stanton that has roots dating back to the end of the Civil War. Located along the CNO railroad tracks and near the National Cemetery, Uniontown was once a thriving community with homes and stores and even a school. The land there was rezoned in the 60s, meaning new homes couldn't be built. So the population dwindled. The final blow came in 2002 when the bridge connecting the town to a major thoroughfare was demolished, making the area a shadow of its former self. Now the city of Stanton is trying to decide what to do with Uniontown as the prime real estate sits largely uninhabited. But members of the community say that the spirit of Uniontown should not be forgotten. Joining me now to discuss the future of Uniontown and neighborhoods like it is Dr. Amy Tillerson Brown, professor of history and recently named dean of the Mary Baldwin College for Women. Dr. Tillerson Brown, welcome to Amplified. I want to start off by asking you to please just give us a basic overview of Uniontown and its importance in the nation's history. Oh, gosh, Uniontown is important not only for Stanton, but for larger understandings of, of American history, especially uh, when you're thinking about uh, the era of segregation. I call it American apartheid, but uh, segregation is is what falls, I guess, uh, a nicer on on ears, it shows the, uh, the the determination and the vitality of Blacks soon after uh, the nation decided to um, come together again, to reunite. Soon after the Civil War, you have Blacks in this area of Western Virginia that decided they need a community of their own. And they uh, convened near that Union Cemetery and, and created Uniontown. Uh, they had families hmm. numbering up to about 60 from the end of the Civil War all the way up through the 1960s. But that community still exists even today. Uh, so there are descendants of some of those older families back, dating back to the 1860s and, and 1870s. And I think what it shows is the determination of uh, Blacks, despite oppression, to create communities and identities of their own. Mm -hmm. Which has always our, been our story in this country. Since that area was rezoned in the 60s, timing not being curious, right? We know it was going on during the 60s in this country. No exactly. new homes were actually right. allowed to be built uh, since then. So what have been the major roadblocks to trying to even revitalize that area? Well, I think what happens is, you know, it, it has uh, not been regarded as as uh, as important as some other white uh, residential areas that would have stayed residential. Uh, the rezoning happened to where they could not build any more any more houses in Uniontown, and so, as you stated so eloquently previously, the number of people in that community just kind of dwindled. But they didn't disappear, and the memories of Uniontown still exist. And local historians have written and preserved the oral, oral histories there. But I think this uh, has to do with uh, political power and, and uh, worth or value as seen by those uh, that have the power to dictate policy in Stanton, Virginia, which is why I think we saw that bridge <laughs> being uh, demolished instead of uh, repaired. Talk, talk to us about that, because at the end of the day, you know, we, we on this show like to amplify the real structural issues that are happening. I mean, most of our policies in some way are touched by race, if not being uh, race-based. And 
just as you alluded to, the decision to either demolish or repair a bridge really gets down to, I think, the value of the people who utilize that bridge. So give us some sense of um, what you might know about that decision-making, uh, policy-making landscape there in Uniontown. Well, absolutely. What is is almost shocking, but not really, is the fact that this bridge was demolished in 2002. That's this millennium, right? And so you have then the bridge that's commit connecting north and south of Uniontown, this historically black community. And instead of doing the work to repair that bridge that was that major connector, what uh, 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 those in power decided to do was get rid of it. That way, uh, disconnecting the transportation and communication between North and South. And I think that that speaks clearly to the value then that uh, larger policymakers saw Uniontown as having to the larger Stanton community. Uh, and I think that's something that we are going to have to contend with right now as a community. And hopefully what we will be able to do is revitalize that community to the residential area area that uh, it was founded to to be uh, back just after the Civil War. Mm -hmm. Revitalization is a word that always gives me pause uh, because revitalization oh. often conjures up notions of gentrification. And exactly. when you have prime real estate that at some points uh, was devalued, frankly, by policymakers who didn't think that black people had any value, um, you know, being looked at now for redevelopment or revitalization uh, by people who are those people? You know, I, I would be curious how all of this is going to, to play out as we track this story, because there's a lot of talk of redevelopment right now about Uniontown. And as you were saying, um, some of the black families are gone at this point. What do you think about what might happen? Are we looking at gentrification or are we looking at, you know, being able to build back black? Well, I would hope that we're able to build back black, but I think we are looking to the possibility of gentrification. And I think what it's going to take is is for uh, shows like yours to bring this to the attention of the masses and then get folk in Stanton to actually speak out for what they actually want. And I believe that the community members of Uni Uniontown, some of whom are descendants from generations long ago, want to revitalize the residential community to the degree that they're able, even with the changes that happened in the 60s, so that they can build back Black, as, as you said before. We, we do need more Black businesses. We need more Black residential areas or, or opportunities for Blacks to uh, purchase and build houses in Stanton, Virginia, just as we do about anywhere else. And hopefully Uniontown can provide that that uh, proving ground, or well, it's already provided the proving ground, but that, that springboard then to continue to uh, revitalize in a way that's going to preserve the history that Uniontown has, has provided for the larger Stanton community. Mm -hmm. How do you preserve that history and character without pricing the original residents out? Uh, you have to keep the original residents in. <laughs> I, I, I think that we, we have to keep the original residents in, and I think that we definitely do need to map and tell those stories of long ago. Uh, if it's a historic district, I think there are laws that are in place that can that can um, require then the um, preservation of that important and rich history, and I think that that's what what Stanton City uh, politicians should do in this case, because Uniontown has been there mm. for a long time, and it shouldn't disappear at this point. I got to tell you, this story is just so fascinating to me because Uniontown, Virginia, is really anywhere USA. It is not unlike my town that I am in here in the Hudson Valley in New York. Um, just situations where, you know, communities who happen to be black or who happen to be Latino were completely undervalued um, and thus real estate was undervalued. And as soon as you get uh, some people coming in who don't look like us and say, wait a minute, we could do something with this right here, right? It's near some water. It might be pretty. It's, you know, then all of a sudden the, the value changes. So I am excited to... Um, um, talk to you about this and thank you for lifting it up so that we could grab hold of it and, and continue to um, keep this conversation going so we can figure out how to build back our communities, black or brown, um, and, and keep it all back in the family, if you will. Dr. Amy Tillerson Brown, Associate Professor at Mary Baldwin University, appreciate you for joining me here on Amplified tonight. Thank you.